All right, folks. Um, pretty late on this one. I'm trying to. I'm trying to watch the uh, the Oregon USC game. That's a good this game going on. First of all, phenomenal week of college football all around. All around a phenomenal week. I'll go over a lot of the games though, so definitely stay tuned for those videos. Alabama. Let's talk about them. Um, still got the gear on. Alabama destroys Vanderbilt 55 to three. This is the first SEC game of the year. Um, Vanderbilt has a pretty good freshman quarterback. Um, not the best in the world, but from a, from but, you know from a a freshman, um, he was pretty solid. Uh, Vanderbilt was three and one going into this game. Listen, Vanderbilt, even though they were three and one, as far as SC competition, they could potentially win two or two or two games. But we all know it's Vanderbilt at the end of the day. It's still like they're in the process of rebuilding every single year. And, you know, they got some talent, um, but they have a long ways to go. So this was clearly going to be a game where Alabama was going to dominate. It was just some of the other areas that we needed to see Alabama try to improve on. Um, we needed to see, first of all, we need to see the offensive line, right? Can we get a little more physical? Uh, could we finally determine uh, the front five of our offensive line, right? Who was going to be the starting caliber guys because in this game we were going to rotate but we're going into Arkansas next week we're going right into Fayetteville and we need to literally have who are going to be the top five guys in that position we don't instead of you know instead of really just rotating who are going to be the top five guys there receivers right could receivers get open could Bill O'Brien take more shots down the field you know could we have some players potentially step up some players that could potentially stretch you know stretch the field right give that give that that vertical threat because that's something that we've been missing all year and that's something that we needed to be answered this for this game um our secondary wise right we still we had some switch ups right normally it's Kyrie Jackson and Kool-Aid then we had to rotate sometimes then it was kind of switched to Terrian and Eli now it's for this game it was Kool-Aid and Terrian so again was the secondary uh, question, uh, more particularly in our corners, was that answer today? Um, that one, I honestly, I don't know. Because uh, like I said, Vanderbilt didn't really kill us a lot with their passing attack. Maybe that's a good thing because we did a pretty good job against their receivers, even though... And Vanderbilt took some shots, and they actually completed some, to some shots, right? Swan pretty much had a pretty solid day. Um, so, right? So it's not like Eula Moreau were... They really couldn't take those shots deep down the field. No, they had opportunities, and they capitalized on those opportunities. So they gave some of our guys some work. Um, but next week, going against Arkansas, we are going to be going against a better passing attack. We're going to be going against a much better quarterback. And that's something that we need to get. We need to get that straightened out. Um, so that's prob so probably out of all the questions that I just talked about this video, the offensive line and the, and the secondary are still question marks, in my opinion. Because, again, the even though I still think that Javon Cohen is probably going to be the guy. Again, Tyler Booker was rotating in there. Um, Kendall Randolph wasn't. At this point, it's between Tyler Booker and uh, Cohen. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, center position, I, center position wise, I think I still feel like we need to, you know, keep an eye on that. Um, next week, who knows? Could go with McLaughlin. Could potentially go to Del Court. We'll see what happens uh, for that battle. Um, I thought the receivers played solid, um, you know, for the most part, Ja'Cory Brooks had a pretty good game. Um, he had, I think he, you know, he did have a, a crucial drop touchdown pass. Um, but I thought that Ja'Cory Brooks in the first half was really, really good. I don't think he really showed, um, any, you know, again, he had a pretty good 34 yard pass, uh, for a touchdown. I would say, you know, I would say definitely after that Texas game, Ja'Cory Brooks has kind of answered the call a little bit, um, you know, because he was not even considered in the starting lineup. He was a backup receiver, and now he's taking advantage of a lot of the uh, of a lot of the the key reps that he's now getting. So I like what I'm seeing for Brooks. Jermaine Burton was finally able to catch a pretty uh, was 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 able to catch a deep pass, right? You know, for the most part, Jermaine Burton and. A majority of the games, except for the Texas game, he was pretty much wide open and Bryce Young would miss him, whether if it was on crossing routes, whether if it was just on streaks, you know, it, you know, Bryce Young would miss him. Now, again, was that more of a continuity issue or was that, was that more of a Bryce issue or is that more of a burden issue? We don't really know about that, but for some reason, that chemistry, that, that connection just wasn't there. It was there for this game. Um, Burton had a pretty solid game with four catches and 94 yards. Hopefully we get to see more improvement uh, between the connection of Bryce Young and Burton. 
Um, we took more shots down the field. Um, again, the, 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 the passing concepts were still basic, right? It's not anything too surprising. It's not anything that was creative or innovative. Um, so, um, you know, so even though, again, I'll give Bill O'Brien credit, uh, because he put out, because the players were in the right position. Vanderbilt played scared today. Vanderbilt played really scared today. They really, I mean, they, they were scared of Alabama's athleticism and, it wasn't until like the second half where Vanderbilt decided to say, you know what, we're just going to come up a little bit closer because we're giving this team way too much cushion. Um, so that's when they kind of started to, you know, follow up on that. But besides that, Bamba were just running nothing but curls, hitches. I mean, they were pretty much taking advantage of the underneath and then finally taking shots deep down the field. That's kind of what Bill O'Brien loves to do with, uh, you know, that's something that, Al that he loved to do at Alabama last year when he was, when, is, when you know, when he was taking command of this offense. He's not Steve Sarkeesian though, right? He's not Steve Sarkeesian as far as just being this phenomenal play designer. Um, you know, he's not, he's not that type of person. He's pretty, he's, you know, he's very simple minded, very stubborn. Um, but I'll give Bill O'Brien credit today. He did his thing. He put the players in the right position. Were there still some questionable things that we wanted Bill O'Brien to do? Yes, I wanted us to run the ball a little bit more. I still feel like we're not really doing that enough in the first half. Um, the passing concepts were still pretty basic. It wasn't anything too surprising. Uh, it's nothing that's going to make you kind of just, you know, go, go, you know, jump off your seat and say, wow, amazing, uh, amazing, you know, play design by Bill O'Brien. However, it got the job done today. And it was against SEC conference. It was, a, it was up against SEC competition. That's the most important thing. We're not going against an FCS school. We're not going against ULMRO. We're going against an actual SEC uh, uh, team. And even though they're not a power, this is still a you know this is still a three and one football squadron. So they know how to win. So for at least for this point, they know how to win games. And the fact that we were able to put up fifty five points was great. Seeing Will Anderson pretty much dominate this game was also great. It gets his confidence up and and uh, it instilled a lot of confidence in the defense as well. Uh, Jaheim Otis once again had a phenomenal game as well. I thought Deontay Lawson played flawlessly. Um, I saw a lot of good things from our defense today, especially uh, with our front seven, which is which is getting better and better game in and game out. So I'm happy with some of the things that I'm definitely seeing. A lot more improvements that we need to be that we need to go off of. We have a big test going against Arkansas. We have to go on the road to Fayetteville. They just lost to AM, which by the way, I'm gonna do a video on. So that's going to be a pretty pissed off Arkansas team that's going to look to really shock the country um, and try to get us, right? We, again, we are the University of Alabama, uh, as you guys can see with the A. Teams will get up to play us like Texas, right? You saw what happened with Texas. Texas lost today to Texas Tech. Texas, when they played us, they just they got up and they played. They played up to their competition. Arkansas is one of those squadrons that can do the exact same thing. That's a very dangerous team. Well coached football squadron with a pretty solid quarterback and grit and some really, really ta some amazing talent. I mean, you see Drew Sanders tearing it up there. So we gotta be on our P's and Q's. We gotta be in our A game. And I feel like we can do that. Uh you know, follow the simple things, don't make a lot of mistakes, boneheaded mistakes like penalties. If we simply can e just execute the game plan, we'll be fine and we'll win that game. But anyway, guys, Gen Sports, aka Gen 716. I will catch you guys in the next one. Roll tide. Peace.